good. I should remember to always wait for that little cue, right? This meeting is being recorded. Well, welcome to worship this morning. I'm so glad that you have joined with us today uh, so we can worship God together. Even though we're separated by space, we are um, one family together, worshiping together. Our call to worship this morning is, comes from Psalms. 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surprising greatness, surpassing greatness, excuse me. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with a clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Will you pray with me? Almighty Father, we come to you this morning with hearts full of praise and gratitude for the way you take care of us and bless us. We have been traveling a tough road, Father, Yet when we stop and look for you, we can see you in all the steps that we have traveled and will continue to travel. Please meet each of us where we are as we continue in worship today. Open our ears to hear your word and our hearts to lay aside the things that are weighing us down and focus on you. Thank you, Father, for your amazing love and grace. It is in your precious name we pray. Amen. I'm going to ask that you join me in singing, Lord, I lift your name on high. I always like that one. It's always fun, especially to do the hand motions at the end. Um, now I'm going to ask Patsy, will you lead us in the children's sermon? Thank you. That, that really was an energizing song to sing. I loved it. So I know we talk about this a lot, but it's been a very unusual year. Am I right? Like we wear masks, but it's not Halloween yet. We're, we go to school at home. We go to church on Zoom. Things are just really different. And we're just trying our best 
But you know, today, the message is going to come today from the book of Psalms. And Psalms is a place in the Bible that talks about life being messy and uncertain. I kind of like that. I kind of like that there's a book in the Bible that says life is imperfect, but there's hope. And hope means, it doesn't just mean to have a wish. Hope means that we can, we can trust that God is telling us the truth. God is taking care of us. God is protecting us. He loves us. So Mr. Fred is going to talk today about uh, from, from uh, Psalm 91, which I was thinking if we added another one, it would be like 911, like God's 911 because that's where we go when we need comfort and we need to feel better. And, and he's there assuring us that he's going to be there always for us. It's, it's a wonderful, warm feeling. So I'm just gonna read one little verse here in Psalm 91. It says, you who live in the shelter of the most high, God, who abide in the shadow of the almighty, God, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. I just love the sound of that. I know it's big words and you may not use them on a regular basis, but when we say under the shadow of the almighty, that means we're with God, like all the time. It, if you understand that, then you understand you're always being loved and, and you always can feel peaceful no matter what is going on around us, right? So it's kind of like if you build like the coziest fort ever, that's just your place or that feeling when you're home um, or the, your favorite blanket, your favorite stuffed animal, macaroni and cheese, all good, safe, cozy, safe feelings. So, oh, I wanted to show you something. It feels a little like this just after it starts to rain. So God is inviting us always to come to him in prayer and in conversation, and you'll feel safe and you'll feel loved, just like those babies going under their mama bird's wings. And as you could see, there was room for everyone, even though I was a little worried when I first saw it, is that last one going to get in there? There's room for even more. And it was funny to me to see that bird standing there with all those legs, more than, more than her own legs. So there's always room for everyone, and that's the trust, and that's the hope we can have with God. Can you pray with me? Thank you, God, for always being there to protect us and love us and help us in even these crazy, messy, different times we're living through. Let us feel your comforting arms and let us hide under your wings when we need to in the shadow of your love and protection. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Patsy, for that. It is a great reminder. And I love that visual of just snuggling in under, under the, the wing. So that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, as most of you know, Pastor Doug and Cheryl are on this call right now, but are in, in route home. Um, and um, from my understanding, had a, a wonderful memorial service um, yesterday for Pastor Doug's dad. So we're, we're very glad that they could have that, that time with their family 
And um, I'm very grateful um, my dad has volunteered to bring the message this morning. So thank you for doing that. And I'm gonna turn it over to him. Anybody hear me? Yes, okay. I got the thumbs up. <laughs> Wonderful message, you know, Patsy, you know, and I hope in, in just maybe a little way, you know, I can dovetail this morning with what um, you, uh, what you were saying and hopefully add to it. You know, let's pray for, for a minute here. You know, Father, as always, each time we get together, we say that we're ha happy to have this opportunity to get together and, you know, share with you, share scriptures with each other, you know, that we, that become really a comfort and an encouragement for us. So, Father, may the words that, you know, come from my lips, you know, be seen as your words. May they be words that will, you know, add to for each of us you know, that sense of, of comfort, you know, as we are under your wings. We just praise you and thank you for all the blessings that you, you know, give to us. Amen. Hold on just a second, but take a look at the, the psalm here that we're going to, you know, be reading shortly. You know, some of you may have heard this before, uh, but one Sunday morning, you know, before I was heading to Vietnam, uh, a couple in our church, the last name was Divine, uh, and they handed me a piece of paper. And on that paper was printed scripture verses that I carried with me in Vietnam and that I have referred to on a number of occasions since then. And that scripture was Psalm 91. You know, so let's read Psalm. 91. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly, deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be, in your, it will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near to you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked if you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you make the most high your dwelling. No harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your days. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Wonderful scripture. The um, Septuagint the Greek version of the Old Testament. It attributes, excuse me, this psalm to David, although there's some real question about that. And we're not sure of the time or circumstances necessarily 
of this writing. But the one thing that we can be sure about is that the psalmist wrote it to assure Israel that Yahweh would keep them safe through all trials if they put their trust in him and tried to live faithfully in according to his will. You know, a promise was made to a new nation that no purpose of God could be thwarted. God has promised us as believers <clears throat> that he has prepared good works for us to do. And if we take a look at Ephesians 2.10, it reads, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance, you know, for us to do. And as I go through and share, you know, some uh, of my thoughts with you, I'd like you to think about this verse again. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. It's God's care for us that allows us to be capable of be doing those good works for him and fulfilling his purposes for us. There's no event of the world. There is no circumstances of life that can surprise, that can overwhelm or demote us from fulfilling God's good works for us here on earth. We are to consider ourselves miraculously secure when meeting the trials of this life. You know, the message of this psalm is timeless. <clears throat> it certainly was served Israel well during David's reign, when Israel was beset by many enemies, and when the Israelites were in exile and then freed, you know, to return to Jerusalem, where they found a city in ruins and where finding themselves where they found themselves you know facing many enemies yet it is timely today as well globally we're faced with wars rumors of wars and certainly scripture have told us about those plagues and pestilence Again, scriptures have told us about that. Enemies equipped with a variety of weapons. Tyrants, in some cases, you know, corrupt individuals. And a world changing so rapidly, and has been changing so rapidly, that it makes our heads spin. Individually, we are faced with financial challenges. There are fears of losing a job or finding ourselves unable to compete in this rapidly changing world. We've got addiction, we've got illness, and we've got death of loved ones that we wind up having to deal with. So let's take a look at a couple of these verses. You know, and Patsy, you know, emphasized this in, in her message. And, you know, I so appreciated that. You know, because as we took, take a look at verse one, you, you who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. The Most High means God is the most important. The Almighty means that God is more powerful than anyone else. We go to God in prayer, recognizing that he's with us, and we'll decide, you know, what will happen to us. Unless we get in the way, of course, which 
sometimes we like to do. This is comforting though, knowing that we can trust in him. So what is the secret place of the most high? You know, how can we, you know, kind of define that? It can be a quiet place where we can go to God in prayer. Um, it could be a bedroom, I suppose. We could have a prayer closet. There are times when you walk into the church sanctuary, which we can't do right now, but at some point, hopefully we'll be able to do that relatively soon. But that can be our quiet place. Or if you take a look at Jan's background, you know, it could be a beach. It could be out in the woods. You know, it, it can be where nature calms our souls and will draw us to God. But you see, the important thing is not the place. But the important thing is where we go to meet God, to meet him in a place, you know, where there are less distractions, where we can take their refuge, where as verse suggests, we can recognize that God is our refuge in whom we can trust. Now, I prefer over what I'm about to suggest next, the video that Patsy showed, because it's very similar to what I'm about to say in that if we can think of the wings spread of an eagle, you know, covering us in the shadow or shade that could be provided by those wings, we can picture our mind, in our minds the protection, you know, that God can give to us. You know, those wings that are out, that we are under, that provide that comfort, certainly, but also protection. So such it is with God's presence and wings covering us, which is, you know, suggested in verse 4. The psalmist carries the same theme through the next verses, you know, recognizing that as we go through life and we deal with dark times, such as we're experiencing now, you know, with COVID and certainly what's going on in our country and the world, God's presence to be our shield. He's our hiding place, covering us with his good purposes. God is over and beyond us. Seeing more than we see and knowing more than we know, he can... Uh, we can rest in his shadow. He's our defense, whose promises cannot be inhibited. And resting in our God deflects the enemies of fear and doubt in times of trial. He is a defense on every side. And the, the, I think the real cool thing here is that he knows every part of us, our lives, and no aspect beyond his reach. And there's no, there is no aspect that is beyond his reach. His protection is always there. It's not fleeting. His protection serves for our continual habitation. He leads us off with him drawing us to himself and rescuing us from being overcome by the world and those things that are going on around us. In his protection, he carries us. And you know, if you can picture those hands out like this, he carries us to an elevated place and by trusting him, our minds and our hearts can help us deal with the churning fears that we may have. 
Now, you know, I started out with talking about that little piece of paper. And if you'll indulge me for a little bit, I want to talk about personally some experiences that I had where that paper, you know, was so helpful to me. I want to talk about some time that I experienced, you know, during my uh, serving in the military that did make it very, very clear, you know, what the psalmist, you know, was saying here. My military experience, you know, tested me physically. It tested me mentally. Susie and I had been married less than a year. And I have to admit to you, I was well fed and my body showed it, which which translated into some major issues, frankly, when dealing with the physical rigors of basic training. The mental whippings that came from drill instructors, from TAC officers and officer, officer candidate school were difficult. So as a result, my request was not always, protect me, Lord. It was often, why, Lord? Why do I have to deal with this? I would later certainly recognize that there was a purpose that was behind all of what appeared to be nonsense. And even in this situation, God had a place and there was an opportunity to experience his peace and comfort. During OCS, there was a time to think about the inevitable. I was being prepared to lead men into combat, which could mean losing my life in the process. It's interesting that the Lord provided me with a a mental distraction. My best friend, who by the way is sitting next to me right now, followed me to Georgia, to OCS. You need to understand what that meant to me. She was willing to make the sacrifice so she could support what I was having to do. Even though we could not live together while I was in training, but through her, the Lord provided me some comfort and distraction. I knew I had her support and that she was not far from me. When sitting on top of a bunker, a few times I had an opportunity to do that, I would listen to tapes from her, which was that comfort, which was that support. And I'm not going to take the time to relate all of my experience. I never really was particularly comfortable in talk, telling war stories. But I can say through all of this, the why Lord became a repeated question time and time again, particularly when I was shot and, and made it, but my point man did not. He was about to leave country in a couple of weeks didn't like it where he was in, in, you know, our, if you will, line of troops. He wanted to be up with his LT. He had a new child at home that he had not seen yet. But the Lord's answer through all of this and after all of this, and to this day, was, you know, Fred, don't question why. Just recognize that my arms will be around you through all of your experiences to keep you safe at all times. Take my hand, and although the road may be rough, I will lead you on a safe journey. I will not give you anything that you cannot handle. You see, I came back a different person. In a number of ways, my life, my attitudes had changed. 
I was angry inside. I was somewhat confused. I was on guard. I didn't want to talk. But my family and my church family, and most importantly, my Lord said to me, we love you just the way you are. Acceptance by my family and others, including the small church family group that we became a part of was huge. Let me repeat that word again, huge. I truly believe that the Lord's protection, care, and comfort will come from those around us, close to us, and those who love us. I certainly have no doubt that the divines were led to give me the reminder that we get through Psalm 91. I have no doubt that the small church family group that welcomed me with open arms when I came back were a way for the Lord to say to me, I'm giving you these people that will help to give you the comfort, that will help to give you the care that I want to give to you. And I will use these people to do that. I've been a witness to God's faithfulness and responsiveness to those who rely on him. Therefore, I know he will do the same for you if you rest in him. Let's pray. Father, we are just so thankful for the arms that you reach out to us, the arms that you put around us to help to protect us. Help us also, Father, to recognize that well, I don't necessarily like this word tools, but that we are tools for your purpose, you know, here on earth. That we do assume that role of helping to care and comfort others who may be in turmoil, who may be dealing with illness, who may be dealing with family issues, who may be having anxieties as a result of COVID and other things that are going on, on in the world. May they and we recognize the care that you give to us. Be with our congregation members, be with the team as they are struggling with the determining what is going to be safe as far as reopening of the church. But most importantly, Father, may our eyes be open to see you and to thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much, Dad, for sharing that message with us this morning. Um, mm -hmm. Will you join me now in singing It Is Well With My Soul?
I always love that hymn. That's that's definitely one of my favorites. So I'm glad we had the, I'm glad it was suggested by my dad for us to sing that today. So, um, so that's really good. Um, I wanna take a little bit of an opportunity um, to uh, kind of introduce our next part here. Um, so we all, you, you all know we've had a um, reopening task force team that has been working at making sure that when we do return to church that we will be safe. And as part of that, um, they've put together with um, the direction of Patsy. So I want to do a shout out to her too, to thank her for this, but they've put together a little video for us because we have to remember when we go back, it's gonna look a little different than it was. And um, I think this video will help us to see kind of what things will look like when we do get to uh, return to church. So without any further ado, we'll have our little opening video. Ah, it's good to be able to talk to you today from within the church building. We've been a long time now, not able to meet face to face, but the day is coming. As we have gathered over these last months by virtual meetings, we've discovered that you are the church. As you move in and out, as you work in your community, as you help people, you've demonstrated what the church really is. We have a beautiful building. It's wonderful to be in here. Never forget that you are the church. Well, our Restart Task Force has been preparing very diligently for the last several months and put in place all the plans and all the procedures that will be necessary in order for this reopening to take place safely. As we move toward that date, I want you to know that the church is going to be fully sanitized. We'll be, uh, not have to worry about who's doing what. It'll all be in place. It'll be clean before, there'll be some wiping down during, and it'll be cleaned afterwards. So don't worry about it. It's going to be very good for us. Also, I want to say very clearly that if you are uncomfortable coming back at this time, if you're concerned about a loved one in your home whose health may be fragile, if you personally are in a vulnerable group, we urge you to remain safe. There will be no judgment. In fact, we'll support you through continued Zoom services as well as other ways that we'll stay in contact. So, when times come, it's getting exciting. We're getting ready to take that next step. And as that time draws near, I want Brian to be the one to share with you what's coming next. So, Brian. Thank you, Pastor Doug. I know we've all missed seeing each other in person. The sound of conversations, prayers, laughter, singing, and traffic. Although, Zoom has been a great way for us to come together, and I definitely recommend it if you're not comfortable coming back yet. Fred Ewald will be in the parking lot to direct you to a spot. I understand Fred has been practicing in the city, and we have some video. Thank you, Fred, for your dedication. It's important to note that only the side entrance will be open during this time. We ask you to enter on the side next to Wawa, not York Road. After parking, Jim Clark will greet you near the door. Jim will be wearing a mask, but it's still the same friendly, chatty Jim. He may need to remind everyone entering that they will also need a mask and to keep six feet of social distance at all times 
unless you're with family members. Good morning. Good morning. Do you know these people behind you? Yes, they're a parent. And do they live with you? Yes, they're a parent. Okay. Make sure you keep your mask on at all times and six feet. Uh, whoa, hold on. Uh, there's no food or drink allowed in the building, so please uh, place these items in uh, the trash box. And welcome to Hatboro Baptist Church. One more thing will be important to know. Bob, can you tell us about the bus? Yes. Hello, everyone. I hope everyone's doing fine and everybody's staying safe. Um, unfortunately, the situation we're in, the bus is not running. Um, as soon as we're able to get the bus running again, I look forward to that day to be able to pull up to your house and toot the horn and wait for you guys to come out and, and hopefully give you a big hug because I really miss talking to you guys and, and hugging you guys. And soon as we can, I will be there for you. And I miss every one of you so much, and I hope you are all staying safe. And as soon as it is safe enough for us to come and get you, I will be there. And as a reminder, no food or drink will be allowed in the church. And we must wear masks for the entire time while you're here. There will be a limited supply of masks available should you need one. Once inside, our ushers will escort you to the pews that are open and available for seating. Plus, as a bonus, the committee has gone out of their way to ensure room in all the pews for the Holy Spirit. You will also notice that the pews are missing something. That's right, no hymnals or Bibles. Words will be on the screen, but if you'd like to read along from the actual book, we suggest you bring your own Bible. Before, during, and after the service, there will be an attendant at each restroom at all times. One person will be allowed in at a time, and the area will be wiped down with disinfectant before it's used again. Jim, is that a tip bucket? What? No, 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 no. This, this says, please tip, well, it's supposed to say, please tip toe. Uh, you know, because Pastor is doing his sermon and all, my, my marker must have run out. Oh, okay. Thank you, Jim. I got permission to take my mask off to show you how I've been documenting my own journey through COVID. I'm looking forward to reaching my goal, and so is my wife. As Pastor Doug said, we'll be putting all sorts of rules and regulations in place to make sure you are safe and comfortable. We are eager to have you come back to church in the safest way possible. At the end of the service, Pastor Doug will dismiss us, starting with the pews in the back. Ushers will be there to assist you if you need it. Also, as a reminder, we will wear masks the whole time, we'll keep six feet of social distance, no food or drink, and most importantly, no hugging. I know that's a lot to ask for us in a Baptist church. No food, no hugging, but we've got to do it. It's for everyone's safety and comfort. We'll get there someday, but just not yet. So, Pastor Doug, at the end of the service, everything should be cleaned up and ready to go. I'm ready. I got all cleaned up. So we're ready to go, yes? Well, everything's cleaned up. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. So, stay tuned for an email that will give you the details about when we're going to be opening. We look forward to seeing you again, and we pray that God would be with you and bless you in this time when we're apart. Thank you. So um, again, 
I just want to take the opportunity to thank, thank you, Patsy. Thank you for everyone that's participated and thank you to the um, Reopening Task Force team for um, making that video. I think it's a great way to um, remind us how things are gonna be a little different when we come back, um, but uh, we are all looking forward to that day when we can gather again, even with um, some of the uh, things that we need to have put in place. So thank you so much for putting that together for us. Um, we'll see that a couple more times, I think, before, just so we can be reminded what we need to do. Um, now, I'm gonna ask Bob if you would pray for us as we end our service today. Okay, can everybody hear me? Yes, okay. Let us go to prayer. Um, dear Lord Jesus, I'd like to thank you for the, um, the ability you've given us to, to be together on Zoom um, and, and during our, our services and our, our Bible studies and prayer meetings and, and just, just to be able to see each other's face and get to know each other. Uh, I'd much rather, Lord, be, be in person um, and, and be able to see everyone. I just pray for the for our church family that, you know, just to, to put it in your hands that we, we just need to continue to walk in faith. And when the time is right, we will, we will be together again and, and hopefully soon. And, and thank you, Lord, for the A plus actors that gave, donated their time to, to get the word out about what's going to be like when we come back. Um, I, I just, um, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of good going on in, in these times and there's a lot of negativity. I, I praise you, Lord, for the good that, that we do see. I mean, and, and people are open to, to your word to, uh, to, to, to seek you and, and they're curious and they're, they're, they're willing to, to, to learn, even though the, in the past they may not have, but they're open. And, and I see this every day with strangers and just talking to them and just I thank you for, for their willingness to, to, to seek you out. And I, I pray for, for our, uh, the good that's going on in our church with the different groups that we have going and with Stacy with the um, with the food uh, ministry that we'll be starting shortly. It's not literally we just feeding food to them. We're also going to be feeding your word to them when they come to us, and it gives us another opportunity to to reach out to our community and spread the word of you to them. Um, I thank you, Lord, for the the prayer boxes that we have. That has been a, a huge success in the in the community. It's we're seeing many prayers from the community out there and may not know how to pray or, or, or may be intimidated to pray, but they're able to put it down on paper, put it in a box and brings it to us. And we're able to, to meet on Tuesdays and Thursdays and, and pray for people like, like Alana who had prayed for her, her, this little girl praying for her father who uh, had a heart attack and, and Mike who had an accident and has prayed for his, his injuries. And just recently Megan who just put in the paper, maybe she was, didn't know how to pray, but she asked us to repair her faith and, and trust in God. So it, it's us reaching out to the community. I mean, it's it, I just praise you for that and continued hope that we we reach out to our community and let them know that they're not alone. That, that you're you're there with them and and we just we just thank you for for our church family for supporting and getting everything together and continuing forward. Um, we pray for for Pastor who's on his way home and his family and Cheryl for for the grieving that they're doing and just safe travels back to us. Um, we just pray for for everything in the community together. And, and when we get back to get to go, and I, I just can't wait to, to hug everyone. I just miss everyone and let everyone know that you're not alone. We're all together as, as we were just recently. It's, it's not the building. It's the church is the people. We are the people. We are God's children and he is there with us. He will never leave us. And, and as soon as it's safe enough, we'll be back together again, but continue to, to, to see each other on zoom and, and to be with one another. I praise you for that. And just um, remember, it, it's in God's hands, and, and we just need to trust in him. And, and we will be together shortly. And I, I, just, uh, I just lift these prayers up to you and in your name. Amen. Thank you so much, Bob. And now we'll just be able to kind of sit back and relax and listen to some closing music here.